Hi everybody, my name is Rich. Uh, I am not a professional photographer, uh, but I am a neuroscientist and uh, I know a bit about uh, signal processing and also reading figures. And uh, the purpose of this uh, video is to try and explain MTF curves, modulation transfer function curves. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I found that <clears throat> on the internet there's a, a lot of sites uh, and, and YouTube videos that are either downright wrong, uh, or two, misleading, or three, simply don't provide enough information to really have a grasp of what MTF curves mean and where those numbers are derived from. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, break down the MTF curve and try and show you a little bit about where those numbers come from, how to read them, and what it really means in terms of uh, lens design. So hopefully at the end of the video, you'll have uh, a better understanding of MTF curves and you'll be a more informed uh, photographer and a more informed buyer. Uh, so, let's get on with it. Okay, so let's get on with it. Um, first of all, let's take a look at uh, a sample MTF curve. This was pulled directly from Nikon's site. This is for the uh, Nikkor 70-200 f2.8 G uh, professional, professional zoom lens. And what you're going to notice off the bat is that there are first um, two, four, there's four lines and two sets, uh, two of which are red, two of which are blue, and two of which are solid, and two of which are dashed lines. Um, the y-axis is going to range from 0 to 1, and the x-axis is going to range from 0 to just above 21. So first, let's take a uh, task of understanding exactly what the x-axis means. So it always ranges from 0 to just above 21, and that's regardless of whatever lens it is you're using. Uh, and that brings up an initial point of confusion, because why should it be the case that all MTF curves should range from 0 to just above 21? And for instance, I might show you this 60mm uh, f2.8D um, uh, micro, and it's kind of hard to see here, I have terrible lighting, but um, the lens, out, the front lens element is much smaller than, say, this 55 to 300 zoom lens, okay? So the lens elements are, have a lot more variability in terms of size than the MTF curves would uh, lead you to believe. So why should it be the case that MTF curves always range from zero to just above 21, if different lenses have different um, lens sizes because uh, the MTF curves are supposed to represent the distance from the center okay so if I take that to mean distance from the center of the lens element uh, that's a little confusing because it ranges from 0 to just above 21 millimeters well it turns out that we are dealing with lenses and we're trying to understand how lenses uh, are, how lenses work but what we're really interested in is the uh, distance from the center of the image circle that's produced around the sensor. So here I have a schematic of a full frame sensor, which is about 24 by 36 millimeters. And um, what I'll show you here is a projection of an image circle around the image sensor. Now that's going to be the same regardless of uh, what lens you're using. Of course, there's exceptions to the rule uh, if you're using uh, DX uh, lenses, of course, but for the sake of argument, um, dealing with uh, full frame sensors, regardless of the size of the lens elements, the image projection is going to be about the same. So what we're really interested in is the diameter, I'm sorry, not the diameter, the radius of this circle. So we can use some very simple mathematics to figure out what that radius is. So step one would be um, making a, this box, which is uh, 12, half of 24, and 18, half of 36, and then using some simple mathematics to figure out what the uh, radius of that circle is, which we find to be about 21.63, or in other words, just above 21. So you can see that MTF curves are generally drawn with respect to um, full frame performance, and it, it's always just above 21 because the image circle is about that size. So while we are dealing with lenses, what we're really interested in is distance from the center of the image circle, not really uh, distance from the center of the glass. 
although really it, it turns out to be about the same thing. But uh, this will explain to you exactly why they all end at just above uh, 20 millimeters. Okay, um, now <clears throat> what we're interested in is the ability of a lens to reproduce contrast. What MTF curves tell you is how good is a lens able to reproduce some contrast. When I say contrast, what I really mean are lines, just lines that are spaced very tightly together or lines that are spaced more widely apart. And we're going to do that at two different or, uh, orientations, one of which we'll call the sagittal plane and one of which we'll call the meridional plane. Now, uh, for our purposes, it doesn't really matter which direction uh, th those lines go in. They might be um, in the horizontal plane and perpendicular to that, or they might be off axis. But the point is that we're going to be presenting lines of different contrast uh, at two different orientations. Okay, so let's take a look at something like that. So um, here what I show you is just an oscillating sine wave. This, uh, this sine wave is 30 hertz. That means that I have some signal that's just going up and down and up and down. And in this case, it happens 30 times per second, 30 hertz. Now, if I do this over and over again, uh, I can actually create something that looks like a picture. Of course, it's not as interesting as any picture we'd want to, to uh, photograph, but uh, it is a picture, and it's a picture of contrast. It's just an up and down oscillating sine wave. So what I might do is take a picture of this. I might present it, take a little bit of it, and present it to the very center of a lens. Okay? Now, if the lens is able to perfectly reproduce this picture, what you would find is that you'd get a value of 1 right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image, scale it down a bit, present it right to the very center of the lens, which will then be the center of the image circle around the uh, sensor. And then I'm going to try and figure out how good is the lens, or I'm sorry, the, the lens and the camera able to reproduce that contrast. Now, uh, to really understand, though, uh, the way that that metric is derived, you have to understand a little something called a uh, Fourier transform. A Fourier transform is a way of taking some signal and plotting it in the frequency domain. So a Fourier transform of this picture should be exactly 30 hertz because I told you that I created a 30 hertz sine wave. It happens 30 times per second. And if I do the FFT, or fast Fourier transform, what will happen is you'll see all of your power, power being on the y-axis here and frequency being on the x, all of the power will be at exactly 30 hertz which it should be because that's exactly what I created. Now, if I took a picture of this and then imported it back into my computer and did an FFT of that and compared those values, so this is the FFT of the uh, image I presented, and then maybe I'll have an FFT of the image I took a picture of. If I compare those two, I can create a ratio or some percentage uh, of which the uh, uh, that tells you what percentage of the power is represented in the photographed uh, image. If it was perfect, you'd have all of your power exactly at 30 hertz for this example, and thus you'd have exactly 100%. Any departure from that indicates that there's some smearing or some, uh, some mismatch between the contrast that we presented and the contrast that the camera, after passing through the lens, of course, is able to represent. Now of course we'll do that right at the center of the lens but then we'll move it and we'll move it and we'll move it all the way out until we're hitting that uh, that edge of the image circle that is uh, being passed to the sensor. And again we'll do this at, at two different orientations. Now <clears throat> um, in some uh, websites and in some YouTube videos I've seen I've also heard that some of these lines tell you a little bit uh, of something about the performance of the lens in terms of bokeh. Uh, 
Well, now that's not exactly true. All the MTF curves tell you about is the ability of a lens to reproduce contrast. Uh, but to the, the extent to which your bokeh uh, contains a low frequency component, which it should because it's blurred, so when something is blurred, you have less uh, high frequency or very sharp things, and you're left with only your out of focus and uh, lower frequency things. Um, to the extent to which your bokeh really is just low frequency, maybe that's true. So the lower frequency components, which in this case is 10 lines per millimeter, which is less than 30 lines per millimeter, might tell you something about the ability of a lens to reproduce bokeh. But I really wouldn't go that far. Uh, it's, it's much more involved than that, especially since uh, bokeh is sort of a subjective term. Okay, now let's talk about the difference between the solid and the dashed lines. If you recall, the solid lines tell you about the ability of the lens to reproduce contrast in one orientation, which we'll call the sagittal orientation, and in another orientation, uh, which we'll call the meridional. And testing a lens at different orientations is important because it tells you about the astigmatic properties of the lens. Now, if you have an astigmatism <clears throat> in your eye, <clears throat> what that means is that you have a misshapen cornea. And when you have a misshapen cornea, it means that your, your eye, uh, the ability of your eye to resolve uh, contrast or, or lines changes based on the orientation of the line because your cornea is not a perfect sphere. The same is true with a camera lens. Uh, manufacturers attempt to make the most perfect sphere that they can, but of course there are technical limits to that. So <clears throat> uh, what we want is a MTF curve that has um, for both frequencies, so in here the low frequency is red and the high frequency is blue, but what you really want is to have uh, the two lines uh, closely together. The more closely the two, the two lines are together, the dashed and the solid lines, means that the lens is less astigmatic. The more that they depart, it means that lines of certain, of different orientations have different abilities to reproduce contrast, and you don't want that. So better lenses will typically have uh, both MTF curves that remain higher, uh, closer to one, but they'll also have less astigmatism, which means that the solid and the dashed lines will tend to be together more. Okay, so uh, to recap, uh, what MTF curves tell you is the ability of a lens to reproduce contrast. And it can reproduce, con we, we test that at various spatial frequencies here, 10 and 30 and the y-axis represents the percentage of the power actually of the FFT uh, that uh, 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 that is reproduced. Um, now of course uh, you have to be careful though because MTF curves are, if you see only one assume that this is the performance of the lens wide open. Uh, in this case uh, this would be 2.8 let's say. Um, you have to be careful because the performance of the lens can change a bit uh, based on what f-stop you're at. Because remember, even though you're, you're limiting the amount of light that's passing through the front lens elements, the light that's hitting the sensor is still the same. So that image circle doesn't change sizes based on your f-stop. So uh, that's important to understand because you might think that oh, if I'm using a really small aperture value, maybe I just need to read the curve up to, say, 5, because I'm limiting everything else. Well, that's not true, because the image circle is invariant. So you have to remember that uh, a true picture of a lens's performance uh, w will require lots of MTF curves, really uh, one F MTF curve per every f-stop. This should be invariant to um, ISO because ISO is going to be uh, independent of the, the lens performance. It's going to be dependent on your camera. Uh, but it will also change with zoom. So if, if you are looking at a zoom lens, uh, then you have to take into account both the aperture value and also the zoom value of the uh, zoom lens. If it's a uh, prime lens, fixed aperture, I'm uh, sorry, fixed uh, focal length, then you can safely disregard the zoom, of course, but you still have to look at all of the uh, different f-stops. But um, really the most important one is going to be wide open. In this case, f2.8, and in some primes, 1.8 or 1.4, because that's going to be the worst case scenario.
So, uh, I hope that uh, this has dispelled some of the myths of MTF curves, and I look forward to any uh, comments people have, and uh, I hope that uh, this has been enlightening.